welcome to the very first Lottie and Albert podcast. My name is Lindsay Nunes and you will probably know me as Lottie and Albert from Instagram. Um, I'm also on Etsy and Ravelry and uh, Lottie and Albert. Assuming this goes to plan, this is going to be a crochet craft and general chat podcast um, about all things yarn. So if you are a friend and this has happened to have popped up on your feed, just maybe stop watching now because it probably isn't for you. And I'd like to just pretend that everybody watching this is a stranger because I'm really nervous. Um, but I have watched back some of my favourite bloggers and podcasters and their first podcast. And they all say the same thing. So I think sometimes you just get to the point, don't you, where you have to start. You have to make a start. So this is my start. I've just knocked over a plant and there's mud all over the floor. And I'm filming this in a different room than I thought because it's so grey today. I thought that we would need light. I'm also filming on my iPhone, so apologies if there's any sound issues. And I've also turned it round to front camera because I found it really strange and was trying to record myself without seeing myself. I'm not sure if that was better or worse, but anyway, the picture quality is probably not great. I do have a DSLR, so... If I can um, film on that in future, then I'll give that a try. But for now, stick with me. And if it's terrible, I'll probably never post it. So I thought I would start with showing you some finished objects, which is a bit of a cheat really, isn't it? Because I haven't made one of these before, so really I could show you many things I've made. But you will notice I'm wearing hopefully one thing, which is uh, my Hobcarl shawl, Hotel of Bees shawl by the amazingly talented Christina Hatterington. If you have watched um, either the Sandra Cherry Heart podcast or the Betsy Makes podcast or Potter and Bloom podcast, um, loads of people have been talking about this and making it, so you have probably seen it. If you haven't, it's a really fantastic pattern, a crochet pattern. Um, it is, I don't know how much you can see, asymmetrical in shape and I'm wearing it as a scarf um, I just don't understand how some people are able to pull these things out of their brain the maths involved the the skill is fantastic but I can honestly say it was one of those patterns where I enjoyed every moment of making it it was really lovely to make and also I'm now really enjoying wearing it so that's a bonus now, I started crochet about three years ago. Um, taught myself using Bella Coco, which I think lots of people probably have because she's fantastic with her beginner tutorials. Um, and it was really as a way of getting together with friends when my little girl, she was about six months old, she just started sleeping a bit better. So we, we started up a um, local craft night with some friends and they were all crocheting, so I started crocheting. So really I haven't been doing it that long and I am still learning. And when I made this, um, I probably broke a bit of a cardinal crochet scene in that the yarns I've used are completely different. So the cotton yarn, this darker yarn, is um, a gradient yarn. I'll see if I can show you the... I have the rest of it here. No, I don't. I thought I did. Here. <laughs> um, which is four ply. So I knew that was going to be a bit thinner than the pattern called for. But I had this gradient yarn. And as you can see, I've still got loads left. So I really wanted to use this. The pattern that calls for three colours, I decided to use two. But I was hoping that this gradient yarn would give me a sort of gradient from the dark here round to the light here. And I'll try and put some pictures in. <laughs> she says, no, I don't have to do that. I'll try and put some pictures in as well of the finished shawls. If you haven't seen it on my Instagram, then um, you can have a look at the pictures I insert. Um, and then for the second yarn, I used a yarn that I bought when I was on holiday in Cornwall last year, which is this really beautiful. Um, it was from a shop in View. This was called Coastal Yarns. So I think it was either sourced locally or they had they had made it themselves. The lady was wonderful. She was really nice. 
and um, I basically just bought it because it was so soft and lovely. So it's 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk and 10% cashmere and I used it with a cotton yarn. And I knew they were roughly the same weight but I'm sure that people will tell you that's not the thing to do. But it worked, it worked fine, it worked really well in terms of how it looks. Maybe it'll wear differently, maybe the blocking where I've pinned it out wet um, to give it its final shape. Maybe that will be affected, but there we go. That's what I did. This is my this is my finished object to show you. My main finished object to show you. And if you haven't come across it, although it's probably unlikely, how did I do this? If you haven't come across it, given the amount of people who have been making it, and rightly so, because it's really fab and it's a great cow that Sandra, uh, Sandra Terry Hart and Betsy makes have come up with then I really recommend it as a project. Or even if you're on Instagram, just check out the hashtag, which is hashtag Hobcow, or hashtag Hotel of Beastshaw, just to see all the other amazing colours. Lots of people have done yellows and greys, always a winning combination as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, they all look really fantastic. Um, so maybe don't do what I did, maybe use all the same yarns, or, you know, equally, it's always good to use stuff existing from your stash that you have isn't it and really I think that I could do a second project with these because they're wonderful so I'll try and put all the details um I haven't got any kind of ravel group going for this yet but I'll do show notes so everything I talk about in terms of yarns or um, people or places I will try and include um as a note uh under this youtube video um, this is the gradient yarn, cotton flowers yarn. Again, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably will have heard me talking about this before, but I might do a bit of a more detailed review on another on another podcast. So that's those. Um, another finished object, it's pretty finished, finished by my standards, is um, my super chunky collar block blanket I've been working on. So again, it might be hard to show you this out of shot, but... Here it is. It's really squishy, it's really chunky, and this colour is looking quite bright on camera, but um, this is clearly a very seasonal project I've been working on for some time. Thankfully it's actually still quite cold here in the UK. I don't know about you or where in the world you are. If you let me know, that would be amazing if anybody is watching this. Um, this is blanket design that I've been working on, which I am going to release as a pattern. And what I was trying to achieve with the stitches was almost like a bit of a, a knit pearl look that you get with knitting. I really like um, how they have the sections are quite different. Um, so that was the sort of inspiration behind it. Um, and then as I was making it, I thought colour block would be fun to do. So. This is probably not showing it in its best light, but again, I am planning on photographing this soon to share on Instagram. Here's a little sneak peek. I'm a lover of pom-poms, but I've gone for tassels and I am loving it. Um, this doesn't have a name yet, really, as a pattern. I think it needs one. I think it will, it will need one. Um, so maybe it's not as finished as I thought it was, and the pattern's certainly not fully written up yet, but in terms of what I've been working on, this is what I've been working on. That brings me quite nicely to new things. I thought as well as talking about works in progress and finished projects, I could share with you some of the things I've been buying because let's be honest, I'm always buying things, don't tell anybody. Um, one of the things, or two of the things I suppose that I bought recently was some new hooks. So for this blanket I use six strands of DK held together um, and again if you have been following me on Instagram for a while you may have seen my super chunky rainbow blankets in either pastel or um, bright rainbow where I use six strands together so this is similar but obviously here I've used solid colour um, this is my old trusty 20mm hook this is just a pony hook I actually just hit myself with it probably will keep that in just because uh, <laughs> this is just a pony hook and they're really cheap just a couple of quid off of Amazon 
they're really light and hollow and I don't know if you can see um, but it's got a sort of join here anyway it's fine it serves a purpose it's really good there are obviously some really beautiful hand carved wooden ones and bamboo ones that people use I mean this isn't a great photograph does it but anyway I happen to see on Instagram and I believe although now I want to say it out loud possibly it's one of those names that, that they pronounce it differently but I want to say novel snob but again I will put the details below of the actual account name and seller because she's fab and her photography and styling of her products is great. I saw some sparkly crochet hooks. This, um, I'm not sure what the branding is, actually it looks like it's rubbed off a little bit. K-Z-I-K-N-I-T. I am going to try and say that as a word. This is a 20mm. So as you can see, it's quite a lot shorter than the pony hook um it's solid in construction it's a little bit heavier it's got these beautiful sparkles i'm not even sure if this is focusing probably not um it's got glitter in it it's a gold glittery 20 millimeter crochet hook so you can't go too far wrong can you with that i bought these and when i first started using it obviously i was really used to this and you get a technique going how do you hold your hook I hold mine like a knife in my hand. So actually, when I started using this, although it felt kind of strange, the fact that it was shorter in a way, nestled into part of my hand better, quite enjoying it, and just makes me happy because it's sparkly and pretty. So I really recommend um, this brand and the seller that I found on Instagram. Again, there are loads of other, I know, I think it's Addy, do some fun sparkly ones, which has got more of a solid, a solid section and a sparkly section but if you want some pretty hooks in your life who doesn't then I definitely recommend this um, I think the main thing if you are crocheting using six strands of DK held together or even I suppose really if you're just using a 20 millimeter hook is to note that the throat section of the hook is quite a lot deeper so when you're wrapping around and making your stitches, just make sure you're doing it over this, the thickest section of the hook. Otherwise, when you are coming back and working in those stitches that you've made on the next row, you're gonna have a bit of trouble, it's gonna be a bit tighter. So that's probably my, my biggest tip for crocheting with, with chunkier yarn or large needles, however you're doing it, is just make sure that when you're wrapping and when you're making your stitches and yarning over, you're not doing it on this throat section you're doing it on the main body and that will really help if you're finding it's working too tightly. So that's a new purchase. I have another new hook purchase, which again is cheating isn't it because this is the first one so I could show you anything that I've bought recently and I have put a picture of this on Instagram but I'm going to show you because this is really pretty do. It's another hook. This is a four millimeter hook and it's a hook that is rose, gold, and marble. How good is that? I love everything marble at the moment, or rose gold. In fact, we've recently moved house, and I really feel there needs to be some more marble rose gold, marble rose gold involved in my house decorating too. This hook has inspired me. This was made by the ever so talented Make, M A K E dot E, on Instagram. She's fantastic, and now I'm having absolute mind blank about what her real name is, which is bad, isn't it? But again, I'll put all the details below. Um, I want to say that this is FIMO, but I think that's a brand. She's made this hook. She's covered a metal hook. I'm going to just say FIMO. It's not modelling clay, is it? It's Hopefully you understand what I mean. But look at that skill. It really looks like marble. And actually... I've got a few other handmade hooks that are like this, similar to this, um, which are fine and they're nice and they're really pretty, but what she's done, which I think is a really good sort of ergonomic attention to detail, is she has um, formed the FIMO, <laughs> for want of a better word, around the where you normally hold the hook on the finger plate, so that actually when you're holding it in your hand, it does have that dip there so it still has that section that you can hold on to which for me as a crochet that 
that works really well. I really like that. So, beautiful hook. She also, on her um, Etsy page, or actually I'm not sure if it's Etsy anymore, but on her selling page, she's got some amazing sparkly hooks. Why is my problem so... So check out those sparkly hooks, goodness me. I, I'm almost just wanting to film this in one take because I feel that that will be better for everybody. I might just leave things like that in. We'll see. We'll see how advanced my editing skills prove to be when it comes to editing. So that's new purchases. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, I've also moved house. So whether or not that I end up showing some housey bits or some sort of interior things or other crafts, if I do more podcasts, whether or not that's something that people want to see, um, then I might show some of those things too. But I do have some new purchases that slightly overlap into the crochet area, so I'll show you those. I have bought myself some baskets. Ta -da! I previously had um, all my yarn stored in a big, well, medium, <laughs> medium sized oak cabinet with sort of glass doors and I had it done um, by colours so starting with red and, and working through the rainbow which was really pretty to look at but actually as my yarn collection has grown, can I say collection? Is that collection? As my yarn stash has grown it doesn't really all fit in there anymore and actually it's maybe, although it's nice, I like organising things by colour. I may or may not have all my books organised by colour on my bookcase. It's sometimes not the most practical because actually they're not organised by yarn weight and some of the nicer minis are getting lost, just sort of shoved in and underneath. So what I thought was, if I could get myself some nice baskets, I'm talking really fast. If I could get myself some nice baskets, <laughs> Um, then I could put some of my prettier yarns on display or, you know, group all the cottons together or group all my sort of four play sock yarns together. So that's what I've done. I really liked the, have you seen the firm living? I think they're a lot bigger. They're sort of geometric bins almost. That makes them sound terrible, but they're really pretty. So I was looking for something like that and I found these on the internet and I've got two of them and actually it was one of those that when they've arrived, they are almost better than I expected because they're much bigger. So I've got two and this is the smaller one. And what I've got in here are all my sock yarns and minis that I've, I've got. So, I don't know, what do you think? Is this a conservative amount? Let's say it is. Let's say it is. You haven't seen the rest, but let's say it is. Or just sort of special yarns. So, um, new purchase. Let me see if I can show you the other one. Sorry, that made the camera shake. Ta -da! So this has got all my cottons in currently. I'll try and style some prettier pictures and share them on Instagram as well because I feel these are a winner. I feel these are practical and pretty um, and hopefully will get me a little bit more organized and it's a nice way, isn't it, of having, I hope that doesn't shake too much. Having yarn on display too, because let's be honest, if you do like yarn, and if you like yarn so much that you're still watching this, 20 minutes in, um, you like looking at it probably too, so if you've got, or if you're looking for something to store your yarn in, I'll try and put the details in the description box. Um, actually, while we're here, this has reminded me of something else which is quite new that I would like to show you. Ta-da! This is a sock blank, still beautifully packaged, by Becky of Oh For Hook's Sake. And um, you may have seen me share a picture of this, but look, it's just so nice. Shall we get it out? It's a sock blank that she has printed for me, painted for me, in leopard print. Because a bit like marble and rose gold, really. We all need more leopard print in our lives. I need more leopard print in my life. So, if you aren't familiar with what a sock blank is, and I really wasn't for a long time, and they just perplexed me and I had no idea what they were. Um, they are pre-knitted pieces. Um, so about this size. And they are typically 100 grams. So if you're a knitter, you're probably slightly more familiar with them than if you're a crocheter. 
Um, the idea is <clears throat> they allow you to um, print or paint in more interesting designs and then um, you can work directly from them. So you, actually I think it's this other end, you unravel the end and I think particularly if you're a knitter, you can then knit straight from the product. And actually if you're a knitter, you are probably gonna end up with a not dissimilar pattern. I mean, it's not gonna replicate exactly, but as a crocheter, I'm quite interested to see how this is going to turn out because um, it's not going to look like leopard print when I make it into socks, which is the problem I make it in, maybe a shawl, but when I make it into socks. But I still think that having something beautiful like that to start from and work from just makes me happy. And it's fun, isn't it? It's lovely to have. So maybe I'll just admire it for a while, pin it up on my wall. Who knows? Um, the other thing about this sock blank to note is that it is, I believe, um, double stranded so again if you're a knitter that's probably good because you can um, I believe knit two socks at a time from it um, how I'll do that in crochet I'm not sure I suppose I could try or I could wind this into um, two 50 gram balls first and then make my socks separately so there we go We'll put him away. It was packaged so beautifully. I doubt I'm going to be able to get it back again. But um, it is 75% merino, 25% nylon, and there's 425 meters. I'm reading it off here. 425 meters, or approximately 100 grams. And um, yeah, she says snip red thread and unravel into two 50 gram balls. This is my face. <laughs> so that's another new purchase another new purchase um also in here i have <laughs> some vicky brown yarn which is some of my favorite yarn this is actually um this was actually part of the february sock club collection so that's probably an indicator of how good i am at working on things quickly or keeping up to date with projects, not very good, not very good. But hey, again, if you have come across me on Instagram, you'll probably know that already, so hopefully that's not too much of a disappointment. I think these podcasts will probably have to be fortnightly, just for the fact that I don't work quickly. I do have young children, and I do work part-time. Is that a good enough excuse? Yeah, we'll say that it is. I would love to do more crochet, I would love to crochet more quickly, but it's just few and far between opportunities for me. It's partly where I actually, I am obsessed, should we say that? It's partly why I do, do do a lot of crochet at the moment because I find it so much easier to just pick up, do a few rows, shove down the side of the sofa as and when I, my attention is required elsewhere, mainly children or, you know, in the evening, if you're tired, which you tend to be if you have small children, you can just do a little bit. Whereas previously to getting into crochet, I did a lot of um, patchwork quilting, dressmaking, sewing, which I still love. But I just find getting out my sewing machine and doing any kind of pattern cutting or, you know, using a rotary blade or scissors. I just, I don't feel as comfortable doing that. Um, or I don't find it as easy and... Um, Possibly, I mean crochet, I love crochet, but possibly that's why I am so into it at the moment because it's like my main creative outlet, it's the one thing <clears throat> that I find does fit in a lot better with my family life. I can only apologise for my hair, it's not at its best, I'm just looking at myself in the camera as I talk. But as I said at the beginning, sometimes you just have to make a start, don't you? And not worry about every little detail. I have bags under my eyes, but then I probably always have bags under my eyes. So even if I waited a week and did this next Saturday, it wouldn't be any better. Um, and also I have an hour to myself on Saturday mornings because my husband takes my children into our local town, to the farmer's market. They've got a little tradition going. Um, and so this is the best time to film because really this is the quietest it's going to be. This is the quietest you'll hear it. Mm. So 
I showed you some sock yarn and I mentioned that I'm a crocheter. Um, perhaps you crochet too and you haven't made any socks before. Well, you really should because um, they are probably not as fine as knitted socks. Let's not get away from that. But if you haven't come across, ta-da, the crochet sock selection by Vicky Brown Designs, then just look it up. Do yourself a favour and look it up because she has some brilliant designs, brilliant socks, and also she's an amazing yarn dyer. I mean, don't you obviously don't have to make her socks in her yarn, but why not, hey? Um, I'm currently making her Winter Wonderland socks, which, again, embarrassingly, were a cow. Part of a cow, supposed to be part of a cow. Um, Christmas Eve cast on cow, would you believe? And we had well over a month to make it. They were um, the Crochet Circle podcast um, cow. And even more embarrassingly, I already had started the pattern that was chosen, the Winter Wonderland socks. I'd already started them in December. So I thought, this is genius. I've already started it. Why would I not enter my socks? Because I've got a head start. Now I know I have a little bit of a bad track record with cows because I get bored or I move on to new projects or as I said, I'm not actually like a, I'm not too slow when I'm crocheting, but just the time I have to crochet is not great in quantity. So I thought I've got a head start. I've already started these socks. I've got my yarn. I've got the pattern. You know, I probably hadn't made that great progress, but I thought this, this is easy. This is done and dusted. This is tied up. No, no, no. Because what month are we now? May? May? And I'm still working on the socks. Okay. This is the, this is the ball of yarn. It's got really interesting, it's sort of um, a kind of cream off white with little flecks of colour you probably aren't going to be able to see. And then, every now and again, it has a black section. Look at that. How unusual is that? That's basically why I bought the yarn because it was so unusual and I hadn't seen anything like that before. It's called Black Light and as I said it's by Vicky Brown. Um, so I started making it up in two socks. This was my first attempt. I really need to get sock blockers. I've had other podcasters, crochet vloggers mention this because this looks a bit of, doesn't look the most attractive. Um, but yes, this is how my first sock turned out. Now I'm a really tight crocheter. I don't know if that's how I hold my yarn, where the way I wrap it around my finger or if that's just my style, but I know I'm quite a tight crocheter. So I'd already gone up a hook size when I started and I've got, I've only got size three, four feet. So they are quite small. Do they look small by this sock? I feel like this sock looks massive. Anyway, I started with a size three, possibly 3.5 millimeter. And actually this toe section, foot section is, is fine, it does fit. But when I got to the heel and tried it on, I found that it was really tight, like too tight for me, couldn't really get it on. So I switched to a four millimeter. Um, and then I continued with a four millimeter up at the sock. So. This is sort of a top border section, so I'll just fold that down. So you can see the way that this yarn has, I think we say colour pulled or whacked up. I love it, it's so interesting. When I was using the slightly smaller hook here, you can see um, it was all kind of colour pooling in a, in a line. And then even just moving up, it was either half a hook size or a hook size, it suddenly started then spiralling around, around the sock. Somebody on Instagram, when I was first posted a picture of this way back in January when I was working on it, um, said it looked like an ink stain, which I really loved. And as soon as they said that, I couldn't then unsee it. So this is my ink stain sock. So all good, except for I couldn't really get away from the fact that it is a little bit tight. I think it goes on and I haven't blocked it yet. So maybe that would make a bit of a difference. But, you know, you, you can just tell there's... In crochet, there's not as much give in the, I want to say, in the horizontal. There's a lot more give in the vertical. Whereas, obviously, with knitting, you get a stretchier all-round garment. 
we've got stretch here, but there's just not much stretch across here, which is where it's tight. So for my second sock, I knew this. And I started with a four millimeter hook and I used a four millimeter hook all the way along. So here we go, first sock, attractively limp and floppy. Second sock, <laughs> so I used a four millimeter and look at this spiral, the spirals all the way around the sock. So now I think of this one as my halter skelter sock. Um, and I probably could have worn them as a pair, like it doesn't bother me that the, that the, um, the, they've colour pulled differently. That doesn't bother me. I'm definitely much more of a fudger than a frogger. So I prefer to just work around mistakes or make them work for me or ignore them. Um, I am a perfectionist in some respects and in some ways, but I I just think that life is, is too short sometimes and that actually you if you don't notice then other people aren't gonna notice and really who's gonna see me wearing these around my house anyway? So that would have been fine except that as I was making the second one um, I decided this one is really quite long from the sort of heel to um, the end of the pattern and you have this section here um, and then you have four rows of this snowflake stitch which is really pretty um, I decided that I would make my second one a bit shorter um, so I did a much shorter section here and then I just did two rows of the snowflake stitch. Um, and I suppose in theory that I could frog this section and then bring this up shorter and do just two rows here so that they are the same height because I think this is, this is the preferred height I would have. It's coming sort of just, just above my ankle. And that tends to be the kind of height of the socks I wear and what I feel more comfortable in. So this I'm really happy with. Um, but uncharacteristically, I decided that it was just a bit too much of a... So I have made a third sock. Or started to. Just to make life that bit harder. A third sock for myself. So here we have number three, number two number one <laughs> and actually I still have this left so it may be that I end up with three socks but maybe that I have to frog this and try and um, work out colour connect it at an appropriate place so that I, I keep the I keep the black in the same I've dropped it I keep the black in the same ratio so this is another work in progress they actually match really well um, and so hopefully I will eventually have two matching socks. So far from having second sock syndrome, not only have I made a second sock, I'm making a third sock. Have you heard of second sock syndrome? Again, I think it's more of a knitting term, but it's totally a thing. The socks, I'm not the quickest to make, quite small stitches, four ply. Um, this is in a, maybe I shouldn't say what the stitches. I don't want to give it all away. Um, it's in a really lovely stitch. If you buy her pattern, you will see. <laughs> Um, it's really nice. It takes me some time. I've definitely gotten quicker with making socks, or maybe just with this stitch, I'm more used to it now. So they are definitely coming along a bit quicker. Hopefully, if there is a second podcast, if anybody anybody watches this one and wants to see how my socks turn out, ta -da! there will be a third sock for next time. So that's one of my main works in progress at the moment. And then lastly, this is my butterfly blanket that I'm making. Um, I love this blanket and um, again it's been slow progress. I first bought this yarn last year, last summer and that, to be fair it sat with me for a while. Oh, I've got a hair or something in my mouth. It sat with me for a while. I always knew that I wanted to make something that was worked in sort of round or the square so beginning here and working out um, it's a gradient yarn cake in the same way that this is. In fact, it's from the same um, company, from the same yarn seller, Cotton Flowers Yarn. Is that going to be backwards in my video? It might be Cotton Flowers Yarn. Um, the difference with this is this is 8-ply, so it's more of a DK weight, if not even a bit thicker. Um, 
I sometimes get confused, as I said, I've only actually been crocheting a few years. But it applied to me is DK or may, maybe a sort of worsted weight if you're if you're in the US and that you work by those terms instead. It's like so I'm using a five millimeter hook for it, but as I said, I do crochet really tightly. Um it starts out pale grey, fades to pink, and then back into dark grey. So this is what I've got left to work with. This colour here. Um so as I said, it's a cotton yarn, and actually it's not, it doesn't have any twist in it at all. Um, the strands all just lie, I don't know where the focus is, but the strands all just lie along next to each other. Um, so it's, it, I wouldn't say it's splitty, but um, I'm using a um, aluminium hook, which works quite well for it. Um, and the way that it is, the colour changes is, is quite clever because it's just, so where I've got to this end section here and I'm mostly in grey, it's got seven strands of grey and just one strand of pink in it. And then as it's colour changed throughout the whole blanket, that's basically what it's done. It's done it out of the, the eight ply, the eight strands of cotton held together. It just changes one, one strand at a time to give you this really beautiful graduation of colour. And so this is, um, I believe, what's known as f filet. I'm gonna say filet. Filet crochet. So it's essentially um, all trebles and singles in UK terms. Um, or, oh my goodness, I'm having a mind blank. Let's just stick with UK. Let's just stick with UK. Hopefully, if you're watching and you use American terms, you can you can translate. I actually learned um, more in American terms, and so then I have to retranslate back into UK terms. And then if I'm trying to switch to describe, it's too much for my brain. Okay. The the stitches used are really simple. It's just a matter of chaining in some places, and then on other rows, working larger stitches back down to previous rows so if you really like it or you've seen things like this and you'd like to try it and you haven't done them before then definitely give it a go because I think the effect you get um, based on the, the stitches needed it's really um, really beautiful and really effective <laughs> but actually a lot a lot more simple than you might think um, so yeah this this doesn't really have a purpose. As I said, I don't know what the finished size is. You can sort of see. Um, it's a good size. It's a nice baby blanket. It's cotton. It's got a really nice weight to it, actually. Um, and I know, there are, I know there are obviously issues with tiny babies and getting their fingers caught in holes, but um, it's not, I'm not pregnant. I'm not having a baby. I've just made a baby blanket for no reason. I do have a friend in mind who I think would really love it and she's having a little girl very soon so I sort of had her in mind as I've been making it um I think I posted this morning why well, I know I know I posted this morning Saturday morning on Instagram um about the border because I thought this sort of bobble bobble stitch border I was like yes that's what's happening for this blanket that's gonna be perfect not so sure now not so sure I think it's too fatty so whether or not this stays is probably not going to stay. I think I might just do a simple shell or quite a few people have said crab stitch, which I quite like the idea of. That's what I used for my um, Atomic Flowers blanket, which was my design for Hobbycraft that I recently published. And that was quite good. Um, so as you can see, in theory, this is very nearly finished. If we have another podcast and you watch again, this may, this may be... Um, a finished object. So the original pattern for this um, is a free pattern on Ravelry and it's a pattern for um, an Afghan square which I think is um, worked in worsted weight yarn and it, is this a square? <laughs> and it's, um, no I'm just going to give up on that. It's supposed to be about seven inches square and so what I did um, was I used that pattern and I just kept going and kept going and kept going and once, you, once you've got that pattern for the four squares, four squares, the square, seven inch square, which I think is just 
two rows and then it ends um, you will very easily be able to see how to then keep extending and keep going um, what I might try and do when I finished it is to write a blog post and include um, the link to the original square and then just give a bit more instruction on what I did and the yarn I used and when I decide the border um, so as I said it's a free pattern it's by Chris Simon and it's called I think in the butterfly garden so even if you just type that into Google that is my other main work in progress potentially actually there could be hundreds more hundreds more there could be more but they're the ones I'm currently working on. Do you have projects like that? When when do projects cease being a work in progress and just become something you've shoved in a bag in the back of a cupboard that you're probably not gonna work on again? I don't know the answer to that. Maybe you do. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my finished objects. That's what I'm working on. And those are a few of the things that I've bought recently. So, I feel like I've rambled on for quite a long time now. If anybody's still watching, then well done. Um, I'm going to stop talking now, but next time I might share a little bit more about me or my family life or how I got, got into crafts. Um, give my mum a big shout out. So um, let me know. Let me know what you like in a podcast or a blog. And I say podcast and non yarny people. They assume I'm just mean listening, just talking, no face, which maybe would be preferable. Um, so yeah, what do you like from craft vlogs and podcasts? What do you want me to talk about? Has this been helpful or interesting? Um, it would be really nice to hear because I, I basically wanted to do one of these because I really enjoy watching them. Um, some of my favorite um, podcasts that I watch are Potter and Bloom. Chrissy Crafts, Anna Boo's House has done a few recently too, so they've all really inspired me. Just dropped a crochet hook to give it a go. They're much more professional than me, so check them out. Um, and watch this space, and hopefully in two weeks' time, we will have another one. So yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, please leave me a comment if you have, and if it hasn't been totally terrible, next time we'll hope for a more polished, less yarn droppy, hook poking podcast thank you very much for watching um see you soon bye bye